Hello and welcome to the 10th tutorial on multi-threading in Java from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial we're going to look at re-entrant lock, which is kind of an alternative to using the synchronized keyword. And um, I'm going to assume in this tutorial that you're, you are already familiar with multi-threading techniques by now. And uh, in particular I will assume that you know how to use wait and notify. So if you don't, then um, certainly have a look at previous tutorials. OK, so let's have a look how to do this kind of stuff using reentrant lock. So I've got a, um, a little class here called runner, and um, it's got a method called first thread and a method called second thread and a method called finished. And my main application just runs first thread and second thread in two different threads at the same time. And then after those threads are finished, it calls the runner.finish method. So these are going to run at the same time in different threads. And then when they're finished, this is going to run. So um, I'm going to start with by just, uh, I'm going to start by just creating something that, um, as you'll know by now, won't, won't work properly. I'll have a private int called count here. And I'm going to have a method here, private void, called increment. And increment's just going to loop um, 10,000 times. And each time it loops, it's going to increment um, count. So let's see, count plus plus. And I'm going to call increment in my first thread here. And I'm going to have the second thread try to increment count at the same time. And then at the end, we'll do sysout count is. And uh, and as you know by now, I would need luck for this to equal 20,000. Because even, even though both threads are um, incrementing count, the only way this will be equal to 20,000 is if one thread manages to finish before the others. It sometimes does. And otherwise, they will screw each other's efforts up for reasons that we've seen in previous tutorials. Now, um, I could deal with that using a synchronized block, but I'm going to use um, something called reentrant lock instead. And reentrant lock implements the lock interface. And I'll just call this lock. Um, and I'll say equals new reentrant lock. Reentrant is an intimidating sounding word. Reentrant lock, that should be. But um, what it means is that um, once a thread has acquired this lock, um, once the thread is locked, this lock, it can lock it again if it wants to, and the lock um, just keeps account of how many times it's been locked, and then you have to unlock it by the same number of times. But um, normally, of course, you just lock it once, so you don't have to worry about that. And this works just like you might expect, really. You can say lock.lock, .lock, and you can say lock.unlock, lock.unlock. So, and only one thing thread, of course, can lock the thread at a given time. And it works just like synchronized. So if another thread tries to lock this when this has got the lock, then the other thread would just quietly wait. But there are some big um, advantages on, um, well, under some, cir some circumstances to using reentrant locks instead of synchronized, which we'll see in due course. So now this will work um, because um, it's impossible for one thread to call increment while the other thread's um, calling it, because you have to get the lock first, and you can only lock this from one thread at a time. Now this is not a good way to do this, because what happens if your um, your code here throws an exception? Um, what will happen is you will never call unlock if this throws an exception out of the method, and your program, well, God knows what will happen. So the way you should always do this is call, um, have a try block here and put the code that you want to be synchronized in the try block and then you can catch exceptions if you want but most importantly have a finally block here um, which of course is always guaranteed to be called um, even if you your code here throws an exception. So this is the way to use these um, reentrant lock objects. Um, you have your try block and then in finally call unlock and the code that you want synchronized goes in here um, so that will work. Um, I'll also, I'm also going to show you in this tutorial very quickly 
um, the equivalent of wait and notify for re-entrant locks. And uh, of course, every object in Java has a wait and a notify because they are methods of the object class, which all objects derive from. So um, whoever implemented reentrant lock had to call the method something different. And with reentrant lock, they're called um, await, await, and signal. And there's also an equivalent of notify all called signal all. But they are not actually methods of lock. They are methods of a class called condition. And what you do is um, declare a condition here. I'll call it cond, and you just say lock dot new condition. So you're getting the condition object from the lock that you're locking on. Um, and uh, it's really important, of course, as well, that you can only call signal or await after you've got the lock, because it's just the same as with synchronized. You can only call um, wait and notify um, within a synchronized block. And it's the same here. You've got to lock the lock before you can start talking about waiting or signaling. So um, let's make this thread. Um, so this thread will acquire the lock. And let's say that it then, we then call condition.await, which does the same as wait within a synchronized block. What it does is it hands over the lock. So it basically unlocks that lock. And um, another thread can then get in there and lock it. And with this second thread here, I'm going to just put a thread.sleep in here so that I can be sure that the first thread there will um, lock this first. This isn't actually going to do anything useful. I'm purely demonstrating um, a wait and signal here. So this thread will lock, and then it will hand over control of the lock with a wait. Um, then this thread will, will wake up after the sleep, and it will get the lock. And in this thread, I'm going to say, um, I'm just going to wait for a new line to be pressed. So I'll say new scanner to do that, system.in. And then uh, I'll say next line. And I'll put um, a kind of prompt here. So this is just a bit of code that I've used before um, in previous tutorials that waits for you to press the return key. And I'll have um, a sysout that says, press the return key. And after I hit the key, I'll say sysout got return key. And then I will say cond.signal. So there's also a signal all. Um, signal just wakes up one waiting thread. And signal all is like um, notify all that wakes up all waiting threads. And so when I call signal here, this is going to wake up this thread. And I'll say um, this out woken up. And uh, above this await, I'm going to have sys out waiting. So all this works um, just as you've seen before in the tutorial on wait and notify. If I run this, um, what happens is, firstly, this thread runs, gets the lock, then it says waiting down here. Then it hands over the lock, so it unlocks basically. Um, and waits, it'll just wait at that point, and it'll wait until this other thread calls um, signal. So after this happens here, after it starts waiting, this thread will be able to lock, and then it will say press the return key, and when I press the return key, it will say got return key. It will call signal, and signal will wait, will wake up the waiting thread. So then this prints woken up, and finally we get the count as before. Um, and as with synchronized blocks and wait and notify, you can't, um, when this wakes up, it's not enough for it to have um, been signaled from another thread. Uh, it must also be able to reacquire the lock. So when you call signal, you should unlock then. And if you don't unlock, um, you'll see the same problem that you see with synchronized, which is that, okay, press the return key, got return key, and it's called signal, but it's not unlocked. So this can't wake up because um, it can't get the lock back. So you have to remember to unlock after you call con.signal. OK, so um, that's just a very quick tutorial hastily going over 
the concepts that we've seen before but using reentrant lock. In the next tutorial um, I'm gonna we're gonna talk about deadlock and I'll show you how you can avoid deadlock by using a, um, a method of reentrant lock called try lock and try lock is um, one of the big advantages that, uh, to using reentrant locks because try lock enables you to try to get the lock and uh, it will tell you whether it succeeded or not. Uh, so you can test whether it's possible to acquire the lock and you can't do that with synchronized. But on the other hand, you must remember to unlock reentrant locks, which is a bit of a disadvantage. Okay, so that's for next time. And um, you can find this code as always on caveofprogramming.com. And you can also get one-to-one -one lessons from me if you want. Uh, so um, join me for the next tutorial and until then, happy coding. <laughs>